Hey guys, my name is Fape and today we're going to take a look at an usual 11 hour workday in the laboratory. Here we go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to harvest these uh, yeast cultures here that are blubbing happily in the morning. And uh, we're gonna make some lysate out of those guys in the hardest way possible pretty much the longest way But here we go. So what we need to do in the morning first things first We need to take a sample and check the growth state of these um, Big cultures those are 10 liter cultures and uh, I think I explained it before But what you do is you start with a 5 milliliter culture then you uh, inoculate a 100 milliliter culture and then you can go pull out the big boys like these guys and start two times 10 liter culture, so 20 liters total that I have to deal with today. Which is partially why it took so long. But anyways, so we can take these little samples from both canisters because they can grow independently of course. And we use this photometer or spectrometer to measure the optical density at a wavelength of 600 nanometers. And we can see the... that was the water for blanking, so you always need a reference. And now we put in the sample from the left big tank. What do we have here? 7.30, no, 7.45 I think it was. 1.09, which is not enough. I want at least 1.5 before I can harvest them. So basically I came in that early for nothing. And uh, the right canister is even lower with 0.99. So we gotta wait even longer until we can harvest the right canister. Samples, no use for them. It's only like 500 microliters, so half a milliliter. We can't use it anymore. Waiting time! <laughs> That's basically what I do. I wait 15 minutes and I'm gonna measure again. In the meantime, I'm gonna do some uh, data processing from the cryo -EM. Um, it's good if you have something like that, if you have data to do that, but you don't always have that. So uh, sometimes you just have to wait and watch the yeast literally just grow. Alright, time for the next sample. Both canisters, once again, it's kind of a hassle to get it out there. By the way, there is uh, constantly oxygen blown into these because they need oxygen to grow. Otherwise, they will just uh, stop growing eventually. Alright, second run. Let's see what we have. 15 minutes later. 8 a.m. 1.15, so they grow reasonably fast. It's probably gonna take another half an hour or so till they are ready for harvesting. The right one is still a little bit... Oh, that, no, that was the right one. The left one's already at 1.3. So we're getting close there. We're getting close. Uh, <laughs> waiting again. Next sample. You guys know the procedure by now, don't you? It's always the same. A lot of waiting involved, of course. Let's see, where are we now? 1.24 for the right one. And... 1.45. Ah, so close. All right, one more round. One point four seven five. Still not there. So one more round. There we go. One point five two. That's good enough for me. Let's take that sucker out of the water bath that keeps it at thirty degrees. First of all, we have to remove the little um, aquarium stone, which is actually used in fish tanks too. So it's in, <laughs> kind of a MacGyver fermenters, I think, what the, this thing is called throughout the lab. Take out the first 10 liter container. We're gonna leave the other one in for uh, a little while longer till that is ready. And here we go. You guys know this procedure. We already had a video about harvesting the cells. So if you want to know more about it, click the little annotation there. Of course, it is a little bit harder to deal with a 10 liter container compared with the little flasks, the little 2 liter flasks, or 5 liter flasks, actually that I used in the other video. But in principle, it's pretty much exactly the same procedure. You pull them in there, you try to balance out the weight for the centrifuge, and then there you go. Those are the cell pellets. So this is what cells look like after they got spun down at 4,500 RPM. And this is what I call a noopsie <laughs> on a pipette. And I use that to actually resuspend the cells uh, in water, in ice cold water, and then we send, then we uh, transfer them into smaller cups and centrifuge again at 5,000 RPM. I think this time we need them in these smaller ones uh, for later reasons. You're gonna see. So waiting till the centrifuge is done, and then getting these suckers out of there again. It's a little harder to open this sucker, especially with only one hand. Uh, try open one of these with holding your phone in one hand. It's kind of annoying. 
And this is basically like my whole morning. Just resuspending those guys, those cells in different solutions and then um, putting them back in the centrifuge and spinning them down again. And this is how the pellets look like after they are combined from all the lot of cups into two cups. Next solution is uh, potassium chloride, 1%, and uh, resuspending them in this actually helps uh, weakening the cell wall of the yeast cells. You need that for this kind of lysis. Uh, so resuspending once again, and once again, spinning all those little cells down to the ground so we can exchange the solution. And then a third one, <laughs> and spinning down again, and now, this is actually um, medium where we are uh, resuspending it this time. And we're gonna add another little ingredient. Uh, that's something you don't usually do when you use different methods to actually kill your cells. But this is simolase or simolase. I'm not quite sure what it's actually called. There are different sources. But you put it in there. Of course, you have to um, put the right amount in there. So what I'm doing here is actually weighing in a certain amount. What was it? I think it was 125 milligrams per uh, cup and I have two cups so I, in total I need 250 milligram milligrams. Yeah. And this stuff actually destroys the cell walls of the yeast cells and um, oxidizes them into CO2 so you actually see the little bubbles coming out of there later um, where the CO2 evaporates. And this is only possible because we weakened the cell wall before with these different solutions that we treated all the cells with. And that is basically the reason for all the spinning down and resuspending. Why are we using exactly this lysis method? Although there are a lot that are faster, um, is because this is uh, arguably, arguably the most gentle way of opening up a cell. So you don't want to crush the cell, you just want to open it up gently and you want to keep all the all the stuff that is in the cells, all the proteins, all the macromolecules. You want to keep them all intact as well as possible. So that is why we use, for this procedure, we use the most gentle lysis method uh, that is established. And that is just this one, killing the cell wall and after that we can we can just open up the cell membranes. I don't even know, thinking about it now, I don't even know if you know how, the cell, how a yeast cell looks like. So they have a cell membrane, like every cell does, but um, it's not like human cells. Human cells only have a cell membrane and that's about it. Um, yeast cells also have a cell wall, which makes them more rigid and a little more, a little less sens sensitive, I should say, to the environment. And we have to destroy that one first, otherwise we cannot crush the cells that easily. There are other methods of lysis, like uh, putting them through a high pressure little tube. And this, with, with that high pressure you can actually kill them also. But of course you are bound to destroy some large protein complexes and DNA and RNA from the cell. Okay, let's put this in. It's kind of like a little powder. Um, and then we just have to shake it. And then the worst part begins all over again, which is incubation time. When you read incubation time in your, in your lab protocol, you always think, ah, oh, what am I gonna do in this time? At least as a student you do that. When you are actually a PhD um, student and work there, you usually have more than one project going at the same time. So you can use these little breaks to do other stuff. But I am just a master's student, so I only have my one project and I don't have a lot to do in these waiting times. But yeah, you try to mix it well, these two cups, and then we actually need to keep them at 30 degrees again so the enzyme can work its magic. 90 minutes is what it takes for this magic to work and this is a water bath, 30 degrees. There's a little weight on top, otherwise these cups will just float upwards and not stay in there. 90 minutes waiting time, then five more minutes on ice to uh, stop the reaction. And then, who would have known 
We're gonna spin the cells down and we're gonna remove the simulae, simulase from the um, from the cells. 5000 RPM. Uh, we are used to that by now, are we not? <laughs> the same procedure as every year. And now we are gonna remove the buffer and we're gonna. It's not buffer actually, it's still medium, but it's a special kind of medium. So we're gonna remove that, we discard it because we don't need it anymore. The most important thing is our cells that now lost uh, most of their cell walls. I'm a little worried there actually because I did that before and the cells, um, they behaved a lot or looked a lot differently after I um, treated them with the simulias before. Um, however, <laughs> the time I tried it before didn't work out so that's why I had to do it again. This time they look weird, so I'm not sure. Probably a better thing. A good sign that it looks different than before. Uh, because this time it actually might work. <laughs> so now a very tedious part begins again. I'm gonna put the same old medium back on. Just without Simulias this time. And that is because we need to wash all the Simulias out of the... And all the proteases out of the cells. Because um, we don't want that stuff to attack the protein complex that, that you actually want to have once the cells are open. So we don't want to get this aggressive chemical into the cell uh, lysate. Lysate is, by the way, in case you don't know, lysate is the is called the solution that is basically in the cell, like the cell plasm. After you killed all the cells and all the cell plasm of all the cells to join together in one big mesh, that's the lysate, that's what we want. And we want it as um, unharmed as possible. Actually, what I'm using there is not the normal medium I use to grow the cells. It has one mole, well, one molar sorbage hole added, which is basically for salt. I say basically a lot, don't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but it is to put up the salt concentration of the surrounding medium for the cells. Now, when the cells don't have a cell wall anymore, they tend to just pop. Like, just pop, because the salt concentration in the cells is really, really high. And if there's no cell wall in place, the cell's just gonna suck all the water from around to um, cancel out the concentration gradient. And eventually it's gonna pop, because the membrane can't hold the pressure. That's why the cell wall is so important for the yeast cells. But uh, that's why we have to put up the salt concentration of the surrounding medium so the cells don't feel that pressure and don't pop before we want them to pop. This washing step actually has to happen three times. So three times this resuspending and spinning down again. What a fun thing to do. <laughs> Make sure to stay tuned for the second part where I fail miserably. Where I get a little bit of a workout in. And where we tackle the ultra centrifuge. I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>